Hi, everybody. I'm Harriet Nelson. You know, I think one of the most wonderful features of my hot point range is the thrift cooker that can be used for deep fat frying. It's just wonderful for frying donuts and French fried potatoes and oh, so many things. It's good for frying shrimps, too, isn't it, Mom? Don't get personal, David. <laughs> Quality Appliances presents America's favorite family comedy, The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson, and of course his lovely wife Harriet as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson, and his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. Yes, sir, spring is here again. Isn't it a wonderful time of year? The flowers come into bloom, the birds start to sing again. It's a happy season, a season for frolicking and playing in the park, a season for family picnics with dad and mother and the kids, and most of all, a season for falling in love. Yes, spring's a wonderful time of year. No wonder the poets write beautiful poems about it. Happy, carefree, romantic spring, we bid you welcome. Out in back of the Nelson's house, there's usually some extra activity along about this time of year, too. The three Nelson boys, David, Ricky, and the biggest boy, Ozzie, who should know better, get out the old baseball equipment and start throwing and batting the ball around. Hey, that looks like fun. Oh, careful now, Ozzie. You're not getting any younger, you know. a mile. Oh, you were out, Pop. I was not. You guys need a pair of spectacles each. Uh, <laughs> I think you need a new pair of pants. <laughs> My old pants. <laughs> well, I think I had enough. <laughs> oh, aren't you going to play any more, Pop? No, no. Thanks very much for the game, boys. Okay, okay Pop. Pop. <laughs> Where'd you get all that mud? Oh, there's plenty more outside if you want some. <laughs> oh, no, no, you don't. You're not going to track that mud through my nice, clean house. Well, I'm just coming in the kitchen here to get a sandwich. No, sir, I've told the boys time and time again not to come in the house with their dirty old shoes. And now look at your clothes. Are you subtly trying to get rid of me? That's exactly what I'm trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that the coming of spring doesn't affect you the same as it affects me. Oh, well, I must admit, dear, you look irresistible, but really, I have to get lunch. Now, why don't you go outside and play some more mud pies, and I'll call you when lunch is ready. That'll just about give me enough time. Time for what? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> Hi, Arnold. Hi. Beautiful day, isn't it? Well, not bad, not bad. Say, you just reminded me. I have to order some fertilizer for our garden. <laughs> you can't make me mad, Thorny. Not on a beautiful day like this. No? On a second thought, Oz, maybe you better come over and stand in our flower garden when you brush your clothes off. <laughs> yeah, I was out playing baseball with the kids, and I slid into home plate. And it was just a little muddy, but uh, these are my old clothes. Well, I hope so. <laughs> hey, would you like to take a walk downtown with me? Well, don't tell me you're going downtown looking like that. Well, yeah, uh, lunch is going to be ready in a couple of minutes, and I want to go down there and buy Harry a little bunch of violets. Yeah? What's the occasion? Oh, there's no special occasion. It's just that, you know, it's spring and romance is in the air. And, well, when Harriet and I are first going out together, see, I couldn't afford anything else. So on all these occasions, I used to buy her a little bunch of violets. And I just continued it along as sort of a sentimental little family tradition. You understand. <laughs> oh, sure, sure, Oz. But gee, after all these years, you ought to have a little dough saved up. Why don't you break down and buy her something that she'll really appreciate? Like, uh, well, like an orchid. Orchid? Yeah. 
What do you think I am, Cranston Pool? Cranston Pool? Who's that, some summer resort? <laughs> it's a, a guy that uh, Harriet and I used to know. He used to send Harriet orchids all the time. He sounds like a pretty nice guy to me. Wouldn't say that if you could see him. Really a silly-looking guy. Well, what do you look like? Oh, he had a, a, a nose and, and a, a two eyes. Nose and eyes? Yeah, it really must have been silly looking. If you must know the truth, I've never seen the guy in my life. Well, he's probably a very nice fellow. Well, anyway, Sonny, with all his dough and all his orchids, Harriet married me. <laughs> Hiya, Pop. You want to play some baseball? Oh, well, thanks, son, but I'm going to take a little walk downtown and buy something from your mother. Can I go with you? Well, I have to change your clothes first and get a little cleaned up. Well, what about you? You look like you just got run over by Cranston Poole and his studs bearcat. <laughs> well, maybe you're right, Tony. Yeah, okay, Rick, we'll make it a go as yard party. Better put the glove away, though. Okay. Well, I'll see you then, Tony. Okay, uh, remember, don't stand too close to any seeds. You might wind up with a row of sweet peas growing right out of your pocket. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 just a second before I go. Do me a favor. Do you mind if I borrow this? No. <laughs> Don't look so worried. Look as if you're afraid I won't give this back to you. Well, that's just it. I'm afraid you will. Huh? <laughs> uh, do you have any violets? Violets? Uh, yes, I believe we do. Uh, I'd like to buy some, please. These are all we have. I'm afraid they aren't very fresh. Oh, uh, they're okay. You sure you wouldn't prefer something else? Uh, no, no, no. Violets would be fine. Uh, I should have kept them in the refrigerator, but we had a shipment of orchids and there was no room. Oh, uh, uh, how much are they? Uh, the orchids? No, no. <laughs> no, uh, the violets. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, they usually sell for 50 cents a bunch, but these are a little wilted, so shall we say 35 cents? Uh, 35? I hope you'll forgive my appearance. I didn't get a chance to change my clothes before I came down. Oh, don't apologize. You look fine. After all, we're both working men. Oh, well, no. I haven't exactly been working. Oh. Well, then, shall we say uh, 20 cents for the violets? <laughs> I, uh, I thought you said 35. Yes, but they're really so wilted. 20 cents is about all they're worth. Well, whatever you say, I don't want you to cheat yourself. Why don't you pay me later? Change. Right, right here. Oh, here we are. Here's uh, 10, 15, 16. The 16 cents will be enough. They're really so wilted. No, I, I have a couple more. Uh, do you have a couple of pennies there, son? Yes, sir. Oh, thank you. you know, that, that, that's enough. I, I, I know <clears throat> I have the other... Oh, for goodness sakes. <laughs> Dropped in the cuff of my pants. <laughs> I left my wallet in my other pants. I'm sorry to cause you all this trouble. Well, I'll have the violets delivered this afternoon. Oh, that won't be necessary. I can take them right along with me. Oh, but there's no extra charge for delivery, and it makes the gift so much more exciting. Oh, yes, I, I, I guess it does at that. <laughs> well, now, if you'll just fill out this delivery form, just write down your name and address it. You just tell me your name and address, and I'll write it down for you. You see, this pen is a little leaky. <laughs> oh, well, that's okay. A couple more spots on these clothes wouldn't even be noticed. Very good. <laughs> well, I hope you won't go out of your way delivering these. Oh, not at all. Oh, well, thanks for everything. It's a pleasure. Come on along, son. And just remember, be sure to drop by whenever you feel that you can. Thanks again. Marble. Yes, dear. Who was that? Just a customer. Didn't look like a customer to me. Did he buy anything? Yes, he bought a bunch of violets for his wife. What are you smiling about? Martha. 
I'm going to spread a little sunshine today. What's this? Oh, you should have seen that poor devil scraping his last few pennies together. So what? Simply this. I'm going to give them a wonderful surprise. Instead of those mangy little violets, I'm going to send them to beautiful orchids. <laughs> You're going to hand out orchids to every bum that walks in here. He was not a bum. He looked like a bum to me. No, oh, I'm surprised at you, Martha. It's not going to break us just to bring a little happiness into some woman's life. Oh, well, come here. You've been drinking again, haven't you? <laughs> you know very well that I haven't had a drink since New Year's Eve. And what's more, I'm getting very fed up with this ugly disposition of yours. The trouble with you, Martha, is you're not sensitive and romantic like I am. Romantic? Ha! Huh. How can you be romantic in a place like this? Nothing but flowers day in and day out. Flowers, flowers, flowers! Oh, shut up! <laughs> is that you, boy? No, dear, it's your old sweetheart, Ozzy. Oh, hello there, sweetheart. I've been looking for you. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? Spring is really here. Yes, I guess it is. Here I come looking for you. Here you are, dear, waiting for me. Well, I'm glad you found me, dear. Oh, thanks. And I'm glad you found me, too. So am I. Ozzy? Yes, dear? What is it you're trying to tell me? If you missed me and you're happy I'm home again? Well, yes, dear. The sink has stopped up. Oh, the... In the upstairs bath. Harriet, how can you be so unromantic at a time like this? What's this all about? Well, I'll tell you this much. I went downtown and I bought you a little surprise. Oh, how wonderful. What is it? No, no, no. I'm not going to tell you anything more. It'll be arriving in, in just a little while. Oh, how nice. What's the occasion? Oh, there's no occasion. It's just that spring is in the air. My fancy has turned to thoughts of love. Well, where's the plunger? <laughs> Bobby and Harriet will be back in just a moment. Want to know a secret? Something professional chefs usually keep under their hats? It's the secret of perfect French frying. Real homemaking news reported by McCall's Magazine on page 115 of their April issue. The secret is in this new Hot Point electric range. The first range with an automatic deep fat fryer built in. Now you can duplicate the feats of the finest chef. You can turn out crisp, tender delicacies, always evenly browned and easily digested. Because this new Hot Point Golden Fryer is a real professional type, not like ordinary electric home fryers. Its extra speed brings fat to frying temperature fast, and its quick recovery keeps the fat hot when food is added. For a complete demonstration of this exclusive Golden Fryer, visit your Hot Point dealer. You'll find dozens of other exciting features in this new Hot Point RD19 range. Lighted push button, automatic timer, Hot Point Super Cal Rod unit, the fastest, most efficient cooking unit known, a giant high speed broiler, plus two spacious ovens. Enduring porcelain finish blankets the welded steel cabinet of this and every Hot Point electric range. Get quality appliances, reasonably priced, and available on easy terms at your Hot Point dealers. Look for his name in your classified section. And always look to Hot Point for the finest first. just gorgeous. What are they? Well, they're orchids. Aren't they beautiful? There's no smell to them. Well, there isn't supposed to be, but they're very expensive flowers. 
Well, it costs a lot to take the smell out, huh? <laughs> Not exactly, but they're very special flowers. You gonna put those in the refrigerator, Mom? Oh, sure. That's what you always do with orchids. Put them in the refrigerator. Can I have a cookie? Well, just one. Gee, they're awful small, Mom. Well, all right. You can have a couple. Hey, Ricky. Okay. I gotta play baseball, Mom. Well, don't get all muddy again. I hear somebody mention my name. Well, if it isn't Mr. Romance himself. Oh, you got my little surprise. Oh, the flowers are beautiful, dear. Oh, thanks very much. Uh, really nothing, just a, a little thought. Why, they're the most beautiful orchids I've ever seen. No, 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 those aren't orchids, they're violets. Aren't they beautiful violets? They, they look like orchids, don't they? Oh, no, look here, dear, I'll show you. These are orchids. Aren't they lovely? Uh, Harriet, I didn't send you those, I sent you violets. Are you sure? Well, of course. I always send you violets. I never send you orchids. And for a darn good reason. Well, then who are these from? Well, this is ridiculous. You haven't heard from Cranston Poole for years. <laughs> who? Cranston Poole. You know, the, the rich guy who always used to send you orchids? Uh, oh, yes. Cranston Poole. Well, he's got a lot of nerve. He knows darn well you've been happily married all these years, and yet he sends you these darn orchids. Oh, what makes you so sure these are from Cranston Pool? Well, who else would have that much crust? Oh, well, look, dear, if it upsets you so much, I'll throw them away. Oh, well, never mind. That won't be necessary. Wait till my violets arrive. You'll see how nice they are. Oh, well, darling, I like anything you send me. Well, of course. You always like violets. Cranston Pool used to send you orchids and take you driving in his expensive automobile and take you out to do dinner and dancing in these expensive places. But you fluffed him right off. You wouldn't even give him time of day. I was the guy you married. Yes, you were. Why was that? <laughs> well, you were more, uh... That's a good enough reason for me. <laughs> Well, dear, I really think you're getting upset about nothing. I'm going to go get dressed. You put these in the refrigerator. Sneaking up behind a person like that. Oh, I wasn't sneaking up behind you. What was that you put in there? Nothing important. Just a couple of orchids. Oh, well, okay. Just so long as it wasn't nothing valuable, like grapefruit rinds or coffee grounds. <laughs> hey, uh, wait a minute. You look like you lost your best friend. What's the matter? Oh, All right. Might as well tell you, Thorny. Something's happened that's... Very disturbing. Yeah? What's that? Come on in the kitchen. I'll tell you about it. After you, husband. Oh, it's enough to drive a man to drink. Be careful, drink, Thorny. I'm with you, Oz. Anything you say. I could stand a little pick-me-up myself. What do you have, the homogenized or the skim? <laughs> Oh, 
Thorny, you won't believe this. He sent Harriet some orchids today. Hmm. Oh, so that's why you threw them away. I didn't even know Crest and Pooh was in town. Well, neither did I. The orchids arrived. He'll probably come honking around here any minute now in his big flashy convertible and his fancy clothes and his greasy hair. Are you positive he sent the orchids? Oh, sure, Thorny. Who else would pull a stunt like that? Well, maybe he didn't. I'll tell you what. Why don't you call the florist shop and find out? You must still know what shop they came from. Yes, I know what shop they came from. That's one of the things that hacks me. It came from Orville's flower shop. That's the same place I bought the violets. His orchids arrived, and my violets haven't shown up yet. How's that for irony? Why don't you call the flower shop and find out? I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. Well, I see what you mean. Well, Oz, you suit yourself. Just be running along. You sure you don't want just one more for the road? Oh, no, no, no. That's plenty. Well, cheer up, old boy. Now, look, are you sure you don't want to call the flower shop? No, no, Thorny. I wouldn't give them satisfaction. Okay. Hey, Oz. Uh, so oh. Thank you very much. Goodness sakes, Thorny. Can't a man even phone the operator to find out what time it is without you sneaking back in here spying on him? Sneaking back in here? Oz, I resent that. You deny it? No, but I resent it. <laughs> very good reason for coming back in here. Oz, it's okay for you to use my shotgun. Use your shotgun for what? Oh, I just thought maybe you want to shoot a little pool tonight. <laughs> I'll see you later, Oz. Oh, and don't forget to disguise your voice. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, I'd like to get some information, please. Uh, do you remember sending some flowers to Nelson? They were orchids. Yeah, my husband took the order. Uh, fine. Uh, well, I know this is rather unusual, but could you describe the man who bought the flowers? Well, he was rather, um... Well, uh, his clothes weren't too... He was a bum. A bum? Well, not exactly a bum. He just looked like one. So, uh, what kind of a face did he have? Well, I was out in the back room. I couldn't see him too well. But he needed a shave and, uh, had on some old, dirty clothes. Are you a social worker? No, no. Just, you might say an old friend. I never dreamed he was down and out. Well, if you want to send him some flowers, we have a lovely selection. Oh, yes, uh, yes, uh, I, I know. Well, thank you very much. Goodbye. Ozzy? Oh, oh, uh, Harriet. Aren't you going to get dressed for dinner? Oh, uh, yes, uh, uh, sit down for a minute, uh, uh, would you, dear? I, I, I'm terribly concerned about something. About what? Oh, about Cranston Poole. 
Well, what about him? Well, I've been thinking. We've just assumed all along that he's still the wealthy playboy he used to be. Has it ever occurred to you he might have suffered financial reverses? And he sent us these pitiful little orchids as a gallant gesture to friends in his hour of need? Oh, I don't think so. Well, don't ask me why, but I have a strange feeling that he needs us. If only I knew where to find him. Well, that's a beautiful thought, dear, except for one thing. Cranston Poole didn't send me the orchids. Well, who did? You. I did? Whatever gave you that idea? Well, I was naturally curious, so I phoned the florist shop and asked the woman to describe the man who sent them to me. I'm surprised you didn't think of that, dear. And you recognize me from her description? Well, naturally. Well, this is fantastic. What's fantastic about it? Naturally, I recognize my own husband. How did she describe me? Oh, she said a nice-looking young man with wavy brown hair and flashing blue eyes and a romantic smile and a carefree, disheveled, debonair look about him. Naturally, I knew it was you. <laughs> uh, naturally. Wasn't it smart of me to phone and find out? Oh, oh, yeah. You know something, Harriet? I just this moment realized how smart you really are. Well, I don't mess around, boy. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny if Cranston Poole were in town? I hardly think that's possible. What makes you so sure? Well, I'll let you in on a little secret. There's no such person. There never was. <laughs> what are you talking about? I made him up. I got the name out of a book I read in high school. Well, then, who sent you all those orchids you used to get? Did you ever see any? No. I never got any. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, what day does the man come round and empty those trash cans we've got out and back? The day after tomorrow. That's what I thought. I've got a surprise for you. You're going to get two beautiful orchids tomorrow. <laughs> 